Honourable members, I have received the following communication from Her Excellency the Governor General. I desire to inform the House of Representatives that I have received a letter dated 9 October 2012 from Mr Slipper MP tendering his resignation as Speaker of the House of Representatives and I have accepted his resignation. Accordingly, I invite the House to elect a new Speaker. The next business is the election of a Speaker. Is there a nomination? Uh, Mr Clark, I nominate the member for Chisholm to be the next Speaker of the House of Representatives. Yeah. Uh, the member for Chisholm has, uh, has done me the great honour um, of, uh, of asking me to move her nomination uh, to be the Speaker of this place. And it's a great pleasure uh, and indeed a great honour to do that um, for her and to do that on behalf of my colleagues uh, here in the, uh, the Labor Party and, uh, and across the chamber as well, I'm sure. Anna and I, the member for Chisholm and I, were elected to uh, this parliament together in 1998. Uh, and in that time, uh, she has been a very loyal friend, um, a greatly respected uh, colleague, and uh, all of us who have been uh, on this journey together since 1998, including uh, the Prime Minister, uh, have, uh, have known, uh, have come to appreciate and to know uh, Anna's uh, great qualities and those qualities that we've seen in action uh, as the Deputy Speaker and, and standing in effectively as the Speaker of, uh, of this parliament uh, for the last few months. Uh, there are no, are no, no doubts uh, in anyone's mind about uh, the member for Chisholm's uh, abilities to do this job, uh, and indeed there are no doubts uh, in anyone's mind uh, about her claims uh, to this job. And it's, uh, it's a terrific thing to, uh, to see uh, this come about um, this evening. Of course, uh, in saying that, uh, it's, it's correct to acknowledge that this, this is probably not the way uh, that, uh, that she might have chosen uh, for it to come about. It's, there's no, uh, no argument uh, from any of us that this has been a, a difficult and, and unusual uh, day in what has been a very difficult and unusual uh, term of, uh, of this parliament. Uh, but that's not to take anything away uh, from the member for Chisholm as she steps up to accept this. Uh, you know, the highest uh, role in the Parliament uh, of Australia. As I said, we've, uh, we came into this place together in 1998, and uh, one of the things that uh, really gives uh, the member for Chisholm such a great, uh, great standing to take on the position as Speaker uh, has been her experience uh, as the member for Chisholm. Uh, there is no better local member uh, in this place than the member for Chisholm. She is hardworking. She is one of her electorate. Um, she is there uh, for, uh, for issues and events uh, in her electorate, big and small. Um, and the people of Chisholm uh, have recognised that uh, and, I believe, consider themselves very fortunate to have her as their member of parliament. Uh, and as a parliament, we are now very fortunate to have her uh, as the speaker. In saying that today has been uh, a difficult day, and, and this perhaps uh, even as we even as we honour the member for Chisholm and uh, we celebrate um, her elevation to this uh, very high office as Speaker, um, I think it's uh, it's right to also acknowledge uh, when I said that uh, it's not exactly the way that uh, the member for Chisholm might have uh, wanted or, or imagined that she would come into this position. Uh, that there are some people sitting, no doubt. Uh, in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, uh, sharing that feeling very strongly as well. Uh, I'm sure that the member for Chisholm's uh, loving family, Steve, uh, and her beautiful children, Madeline and John, uh, would be wishing very much that they were here uh, in the chamber with her, but they would be very, very proud of you, uh, Anna, as we all are, uh, in taking on this position. Uh, in closing, I really do. Uh, do really uh, do applaud the way that you've conducted yourself uh, in the last few years. Being the deputy speaker uh, was something that you took on uh, and applied yourself to in the same way that you did uh, being the member for Chisholm. Got stuck in. You were such a team player. You were really uh, there, looking out for uh, for all of us as members of parliament, and really 
seeing, uh, doing your role exceptionally well uh, to make sure that the parliament functioned uh, to the highest possible standards. And uh, we've seen you do that in, again, the most difficult, uh, difficult circumstances in the last few months. Uh, Member for Chisholm, I wish you all the best uh, in your new role as the Speaker, and uh, we look forward to serving under you and uh, to serving the people of Australia as you uh, bring the, uh, the Parliament uh, to even uh, higher standards um, in the way that we know you can do so well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I move that the member for Chisholm take the chair as Speaker. Is the motion seconded? Uh, I second the motion, uh, Mr Clark. Uh, Anna Burke uh, became the member for Chisholm upon the retirement of uh, Michael Wooldridge. Uh, she has proved to be a very diligent and conscientious local representative who is well liked by her electorate. Uh, and who has steered Chisholm uh, quite some distance away from its former status as a swinging or, or marginal seat. Uh, in 2007, uh, she became Deputy Speaker after the 2007 election uh, and served as uh, Deputy to Harry Jenkins during the life of the previous parliament, which was a task that she performed with considerable flair and distinction. Uh, the 2010 election and the unusual circumstances of the hung parliament uh, led to her taking a break from Deputy Speaker duties. Uh, she sat next to me in the chamber during question time and would occasionally offer her observations about question time and the characters who inhabit it, uh, but to the best of my knowledge she never sent any text messages or emails containing her thoughts, uh, which was both prudent and prescient of her. Uh, late last year she was restored to the Deputy Speaker's position and earlier this year she found herself in the very unusual position of being asked to carry out the duties of the Speaker, particularly at question time, while remaining Deputy Speaker. Uh, for some of us who believe in the concept of higher duties, uh, this was a little bit unusual, uh, but Anna carried out this role with good humour and with great dignity. Uh, given this background of service to the parliament, she is the obvious person to succeed the member for Fisher as Speaker, and I think that no one in the House, having heard the member for Chisholm or seen the member for Chisholm in action, will be surprised that government members are nominating her for this position. I hope that she will have the support of the opposition and of the, uh, uh, and of the whole House, uh, both in the election process uh, and in carrying out her duties as Speaker for the remainder of this parliament. Uh, she has demonstrated beyond all doubt uh, that she has the, uh, the knowledge, the experience, uh, the sense of fairness and even-handedness and the temperament to carry out this important role. Uh, like the member for Capricornia, I note the, uh, the role that uh, her husband Steve and her children have played in her life. I know this, this will be a very proud moment for them and that, uh, like other families in this place, they have experienced considerable sacrifices uh, in supporting Anna's political career. And I wish uh, her family all the best in regard to this as well. Uh, finally, after uh, what we've been through in the last few months, I, I think this House could use a little healing. And I think we all have an obligation to make that happen and that Anna is just the right person to lead us in accomplishing that. Does the member accept the nomination? I accept the nomination. Is there any further proposal? The time for proposals has expired. I declare that the honourable member proposed, the honourable member for Chisholm, has been elected as Speaker.
I wish to express my grateful thanks for the high honour the House has pleased to confer upon me. Um, I am truly speechless at this time, and for those of you who know me well will find that quite passing strange. Um, I am deeply honoured and moved by this incredible honour that the House has bestowed upon me. At the outset, can I thank the member for Capricornia and Wills for their, their gracious and kind words. Um, they almost moved me to tears. Um, it's difficult to hear yourself praised. We don't accept it easily or lightly, so I do accept those absolutely delightful remarks. I do look forward to this great honour and this indeed difficult challenge. I hope I will serve the House with distinction and pride as the only the second female speaker in this chamber. I will draw upon the great legacy of Joan Child, who was the first female speaker in this House. Joan is, uh, as many would suspect, getting on in years and not in great health. Um, so I am looking to her for the inspiration she showed in the way she led this House, also in some difficult circumstances. Um, I also have the legacy of Harry Jenkins, the member for Scullin, to follow in and to live up to. And Harry taught me many, many things, and I'm incredibly grateful and appreciative for his kindness, his guidance, sometimes not his wit or his dancing ability, but, um, but I do, do express to him my gratitude for his assistance in this role. To the member for Fisher, I also want to extend my thanks for his delightful remarks about me today, but also the incredible gracious way he stood aside this afternoon in very difficult circumstances. The member for Fisher has done the role of speakership a great honour. He actually undertook the role in a very dignified, effective and impartial manner, as many in this House have commented on. And we need to praise and thank him for the role he undertook in that light. And I do want to accord my many thanks to him for how he conducted himself in this chamber and for how he always treated myself and my staff with the utmost respect. I'm a bit saddened that my delightful husband and children and my mum aren't here tonight to be able to share this, but I know they're glued to Channel 24. Um, so I hope you're broadcasting. Um, although I'll be gravely disappointed, um, but um, it's, uh, it, uh, none of us can do these roles without our family support. None of us are here on our own. Without our staff, without our electorates, without our families, we do not do this job. Um, it's been 14 years for me in this parliament. I've had both my children since being here. So my, obviously my husband has been an enormous support over those many years, and I really do need to thank him for that. And also, in the middle of his studies and uh, all the rest that's going on in his life, to apologise now for the further impost I'm about to place on it. Um, so I, I do need to thank Steve at the outset, but also my mum and my brothers and sisters. Many of you know my extended family on my side, uh, on the government side of the house, um, who've also been an enormous support to me over the many years. Sadly, Dad is no longer here to see this. I know um, in his inimitable fashion he would have been very proud but would have rung me up afterwards to tell me what I'd done wrong. Um, often your greatest fans or your greatest critics. So I know he will be somewhere looking down upon me and uh, delighted at how I am doing as he is in all his children. Thank you very much for this honour. I look forward to serving the House well and with distinction, and uh, if we could all remember that this is, we serve this Parliament and the people of Australia and uphold the dignity it deserves. Thank you very much. The Prime Minister. Uh, I rise, uh, Madam Speaker, to congratulate you on your election. Uh, you and I know each other well. We've known each other for, uh, if not a whole lifetime, at least half of it, uh, coming into this parliament in the same election and knowing each other for a large number of years before that. Uh, you have always been 
a very hard-working, very focused, very diligent member of this parliament, uh, someone who could teach uh, a large number of others about what it means to be a servant of your constituency. You've always been a very feisty advocate of your part of the world, and I've had the pleasure of visiting your electorate with you on a number of occasions and seeing how appreciated your efforts are there. You're also someone who made a deliberate decision uh, to specialise in the work of this parliament. Uh, some come to this parliament with their eyes set on the executive. Uh, some come to this parliament fully appreciating the roles and opportunities that parliament can give. Uh, you came to this parliament with the capacities to uh, address many of the opportunities that being in parliament, being in opposition, being in government can bring. Uh, but you did make a deliberate decision during your career uh, to focus on uh, what it is to be a parliamentarian and what it is to be a servant of this parliament. And so, with some twists and turns along the way, uh, that has led you to here tonight and to your election today. Uh, I congratulate you on your election. I know your family, glued to 24, will be absolutely delighted. I've had the opportunity to meet with your family on more than one occasion. Uh, their pride in you is palpable, and I'm sure that pride is absolutely running over tonight. Uh, can I say, too, uh, as someone who, as recently as this morning, uh, was speaking at a women's breakfast about women's roles in parliament, uh, women's roles in leadership, I spoke, this, I spoke this morning about the trailblazing role of Joan Childs in this parliament, uh, being the first woman to serve as speaker. I think it's very fitting indeed that 26 years later we are here uh, welcoming another woman as speaker of this parliament. Uh, and so I think that uh, as a role model uh, to other women who may be looking at this place and thinking about what could potentially uh, be their role within it, uh, your election to the speakership today provides another role model for those women and girls. So my personal congratulations to you. My congratulations as Prime Minister. My congratulations as Federal Labor leader. Uh, we will do everything we can uh, to work with you. I can't quite make that a uh, guarantee of the best of behaviour on all occasions, but I promise you we will be trying and respecting your office and your rulings and your efforts as Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition. Well, Madam Speaker, this has been a remarkable parliament in so many ways, but it is uh, remarkable in this sense. It is the first parliament in the history of the Commonwealth to have had three speakers in the life of a single parliament. Uh, I hope, Madam Speaker, uh, that you will learn from the example of the first speaker of this parliament, uh, the member for Scullin. I honour your words uh, earlier this evening, your words of respect uh, uh, for the first speaker of this parliament. I also honour your words of sympathy and appreciation for the second speaker uh, of this parliament. Whatever we think of the second speaker of this parliament, this is a tragic night for him and for his family. Madam Speaker, I regret the fact that you were unable to be the Deputy Speaker early in this parliament because uh, the politics of this parliament meant that your own party didn't see fit to nominate you as Deputy Speaker. I regret the fact that you were unable to, expect, uh, unable to accept our nomination uh, as Speaker uh, back in November of last year when I think you would have done an outstanding job uh, in the chair after the member for Scullin uh, was, uh, for one reason or another, unable to continue. So I do regret the fact that you've come late uh, to this chair. Nevertheless, uh, Madam Speaker, let me say uh, that you have uh, served very competently uh, in the time you have uh, acted as Speaker uh, in this chamber, and uh, I am confident that you will discharge your duties faithfully and honourably for the duration of this parliament. The Leader of the Nationals. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and can I congratulate you also on your election to this high office. You've certainly served a, an unusual apprenticeship, uh, but you come into the, uh, into the Speaker's chair 
uh, completing the final task of the work of Speaker in this parliament with the experience of, of having uh, uh, led a number of question times and been involved in the procedures of this House in a very intimate, uh, at a very intimate level. Uh, I congratulate you on your election. Um, as uh, the Leader of the Opposition said, we did try to nominate you once previously, so that re uh, reflects uh, our respect for you in the position. You have a particularly challenging task to, uh, to build on the dignity and, and honour of the profession and to restore some of the hurt that uh, obviously is in the chamber on this day. Uh, I believe that you will undertake those, uh, that responsibility with, due, with great diligence and considerable, uh, uh, considerable ability. I acknowledge also that this has been a particularly difficult day for your predecessor. He, I commend his decision uh, to, to resign. And I know that uh, his, his very action can help then, therefore, to start the rebuilding process so that this House can earn and, and deserve the respect of the Australian people as it gets about its important work of legislating uh, for the people of this country. Congratulations on your election. Uh, we assure you of our, of our support. Uh, we will try to be as well behaved as, as the circumstances might permit but you have demonstrated in the time that you've been in the chair a willingness to deal with issues and with people in a sympathetic way as possible, and we wish you well in your new position. The Manager of Opposition Business. Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, Madam Speaker, I should say, I hesitate to rise before the Leader of the House, but I see that the Leader of the House is otherwise detained at the cross benches. Uh, but I do want to uh, uh, congratulate you, Madam Speaker, on your uh, election uh, unanimously of the House uh, tonight as Speaker. This has been an extraordinary day in Australian politics, another chaotic and extraordinary day in the 43rd Parliament. And in congratulating you as the new Speaker of the House and, as you point out, as the second woman to fill that role, uh, and I congratulate you on your long service to the Parliament and rise into this very high office. And in doing so, can I pay tribute to the member for Fisher? Uh, as the previous speaker, who showed the good judgment, the good judgment tonight, uh, to resign that the Prime Minister failed to show today in the House. I'll leave it at that, Madam Deputy Speaker, Madam Speaker, because I don't want to cast a pall over your election. But the facts remain, the facts remain, that the member for Fisher showed the judgment tonight to resign that the Prime Minister did not show today, yet again in this House. Can I also say, Madam Speaker, that this uh, is the culmination of my own nomination of you 11 months ago. <laughs> and uh, the, tumult, the tumult that has uh, gripped the House for the last 11 months, particularly the last six months, could all have been avoided, could all have been avoided if the Labor Party had accepted my nomination of you as Speaker 11 months ago. But it's 11 months late, but not too late, Madam Speaker, for you to make an indelible imprint on the parliament. And thirdly, can I say, Madam Speaker, that this is uh, another unprecedented day to have three speakers in the 43rd parliament is something that I've promised the clerks we will not have in the 44th parliament. Yeah. I'm sure the Australian public We'll look forward. We'll look forward in the 44th Parliament. Order. Whomever wins, whomever Order. wins the coming election, whomever wins the coming election, whether it is the Labor Party or the Coalition, I can be absolutely certain the Australian public will never invest in a hung Parliament again after the chaos and scandal that has beset this Parliament. And I hope, Madam Speaker, that in the tenure. Uh, that you hold as Speaker, that you will be able to restore some of the integrity to the parliament. And as manager of opposition business, I look forward to the opportunity of working closely with you to help restore that integrity. The Leader of the House has the call. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I'm going to speak to the resolution that's before the chair. And uh, I'm so sure that uh, you will be very strong uh, in enforcing the standing orders uh, as they apply as the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Uh, you and I know each other extremely well. Uh, we both, in terms of, uh, came into this parliament 
you had a second child, but we had a first child at around about the same time. And uh, certainly the difficulties of juggling uh, family uh, with uh, the representational roles uh, yourself, particularly in what was a marginal seat that you've managed to turn into a much more safe seat for uh, this side of politics. You are someone who has had a great deal of experience uh, as uh, the Deputy Speaker serving on the Speaker's panel. Uh, you have had uh, the experience of uh, discussions with regard to the application of uh, the new uh, standing orders uh, that exist uh, in this parliament and at all times at all times you have uh, displayed uh, integrity and a sense of respect for this magnificent chamber of which we have the honor of serving in madam speaker which is a nice thing to say uh, Madam Speaker, I say to you uh, congratulations. Uh, this is indeed an honour that I know uh, your husband and uh, dear uh, Madeline and John uh, will be very pleased with. I think it is a credit uh, to you, the way that you've conducted yourself, uh, the fact that uh, you've been elected uh, to this position uh, this evening, and I look forward to working with you as the Leader of the House of Representatives. The Member for Melbourne. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On behalf of the Australian Greens, just very briefly, I'd like to congratulate you on your election to this role. I know from my experience of having worked with you on the Selection Committee, as well as uh, having seen you in this parliament, that you take very seriously the at times competing obligations that this unique parliament imposes on the Speaker. And I have absolutely no doubt that uh, in the coming months you will continue to exercise that very uh, high standard of integrity. Uh, and once again, and I think probably on behalf of several other members of the crossbench, congratulate you on your election. Thank you very much. The Prime Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I understand that the Governor General will advise when she will be pleased to receive you as Speaker. I thank the Prime Minister. The next business is the election of the Deputy Speaker. The, the Honourable Member for Throsby. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. Can I uh, start by congratulating you unconditionally, unqualified. Uh, the elevation to this most august role in this parliament deserves no less. It's my great uh, pleasure, Deputy Speaker, uh, to nominate uh, uh, my friend, uh, the member for Hindmarsh, uh, to be the Deputy Speaker. Uh, he has informed me tonight that this is actually the anniversary of his eighth year as a member of this place. Uh, and in the time that I've been here, considerably shorter than eight years, I've known him to be uh, a man of great integrity and a fine parliamentarian. I know that he has served well on the Speaker's panel and he's been an active member of this place and that he is well respected across the aisle. He's, conserved, he's, he's served his constituency with vigour and pride and when he has come to this place he has served as a parliamentarian with principle, diligence and with honour. I've had the great uh, privilege recently to witness the work that he has done as a parliamentarian in advancing the cause and interests of members of this place uh, in the important issue of prostate cancer. I'm also aware of the great uh, work and energy that he puts into in advancing uh, the cause and interests of the special broadcasting service. And one of the qualities that I think will serve him well, and particularly uh, uh, his role uh, as uh, Deputy Speaker, uh, is where I witnessed the member for Hindmarsh put an enormous amount of work into seeking to achieve a bipartisan solution to probably the, greatest, the issue that has uh, greatest troubled uh, this parliament, the issue of how we deal with our and discharge our humanitarian obligation to asylum seekers. It was the member for Hindmarsh who reached out across the aisle and to members of the crossbenchers to attempt uh, to forge a bipartisan solution which would meet the needs, our humanitarian interests as well as the political interests of this place. Regretfully, we're unable to achieve that, but that is uh, in no part due to the lack of vigour and effort and principle the member for Hindmarsh took to this place. 
I'm sure he will be a great assistant to you, Deputy Se uh, Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker. It is the will of the Parliament uh, uh, to, uh, to accept the member for Hindmarsh as the Deputy Speaker. Thank you, member. Uh, uh, I move that the member for Hindmarsh be the Deputy Speaker. Is the motion seconded? The member for Kingston has the call. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to congratulate you on your elevation to the role of speakership. It gives me great pleasure to nominate the member for Highmarsh as uh, the Deputy Speaker. I've known Steve for a long, long time, and uh, he has been a man that's always uh, behaved with great honour. He's always had a lot of integrity and always been known as a good Labor man. Steve was elected to this parliament eight years, eight years ago today, Madam Speaker, and uh, I'd just like to say happy anniversary to Steve for his election. Since that time, he has been a champion for his electorate of Hindmarsh and every elector within that. I often get to meet some of Steve's electors as I'm out and about in Adelaide, and nobody has ever said a bad word about Steve. They know that he is there standing up for them in this place with uh, uh, all his guts and fight that he has in them. So I'd like to uh, reflect on his great work he does in the electorate. Steve is also, uh, sorry, the member for Hindmarsh has uh, also um, served on the Speaker's panel for five years, and during that time I think he showed and demonstrated that he has the skills to perform the role as Deputy Speaker. I think uh, he's shown during that time that he has uh, he's a very inclusive uh, member of parliament, a very compassionate and very fair person, and I think those, uh, those uh, values will serve him well, it, well in his role as Deputy Speaker. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I've also had the pleasure of not only knowing Steve for a long time but also serving with him in committee work. In the 42nd, uh, 41st Parliament, he was Deputy Chair of the Health and Ageing Committee and has become chair uh, of that committee in the 42nd and 43rd Parliament. I served under him uh, while he was chair in the 42nd Parliament, and I have to say he commanded a great deal of respect from all sides of the House as we went through uh, a number of different important inquiries, which he steered incredibly well. I have to say that uh, the member for Highmarsh will make a great deputy speaker, and uh, I know that he's supported very much from, by his beautiful wife Wendy and his son Alex and, uh, and George. So, well, on that note, um, I think uh, he is a very, very uh, excellent candidate for the role of deputy speaker, and I second him for that position. Is there any further proposals? The member for Sturt. Madam Speaker, I have great pleasure in nominating the member for Maranoa as the Deputy Speaker. Uh, I have nominated the member for Maranoa on numerous occasions to be the Deputy Speaker, and I hope on this occasion that the member for Maranoa might be successful. Uh, without detracting from the member for Hindmarsh, who has been here for eight years, the member for Maranoa has in fact been here since 1990. Uh, he has served the parliament with great distinction. He served the parliament as a minister for six years in the Howard government, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, the Minister assisting uh, as the Minister for Defence. Uh, he's also served as a chairman of significant committees in this place over a long time and has served as the second Deputy Speaker for this parliament and the previous parliament. In fact, there is no better qualified member of the parliament to serve as the Deputy Speaker than the member for Maranoa. I'm absolutely delighted that the member for Maranoa has been re-preselected uh, to serve as the member for Maranoa uh, in the, hopefully the 44th parliament, should he be elected. Uh, and, uh, uh, I think they, count the vote, they, they weigh the vote in Maranoa as opposed to count it, Madam, uh, Madam Speaker, so I assume he'll be back here and be elected. It gives me great pleasure to move the member for Maranoa to be the deputy speaker of this parliament after the uh, tumult of the last two years. The member for Windsor. The member for New England. Uh, what am New I England, uh, uh, Madam apologies. Speaker. Uh, it's been a long I'd, day. Uh, I'd like to first congratulate you, but also to second the, the nomination of the member for Maranoa. And it's a great pleasure to join with the member for Sturt, uh, who we had 
we, we, had an, we had an occasion only two years ago where, where we, were, we were very close to one another, and uh, I'm uh, delighted that, uh, to be able to support you in your nomination of the member for Maranoa. Uh, the member for Maranoa has had an outstanding career uh, in this parliament. He knows the job extraordinarily well in terms of the speakership, and I'm sure he'll be of great assistance to you. Um, Madam Speaker, and it's a, a great a privilege and a pleasure to, uh, uh, to second the member for Maranoa in, uh, in this position. Is there any further proposals? The time for proposals has expired. The question is that the ballot be now taken. In accordance with Standing Order 14, the bells will be rung and a ballot taken. Honourable members should resume their usual seats for, for the ballot.
time has expired. Ballot papers will now be distributed. I remind honourable members that this ballot is for the election of Deputy Speaker. Only one name should be written on the ballot paper. The candidate who has the greater number of votes shall be the Deputy Speaker. The candidates are the member for Maranara and the member for Hindmarsh. Will honourable members please write on the ballot paper the name for the candidate for whom they wish to vote? Uh, the either will do. The <laughs> the individual's name can be written on the ballot paper. Bruce Scott and or Steve Georgianis. <laughs> The member for Sturt on a point of order. Madam the Speaker, member for Sturt on a point of order. Madam Speaker, you said that the members should be in their usual seats. The leader of the house is in the cross benches and filling out. It seems to be filling out another ballot paper. Could the leader of the house? Could the leader of the house please return to his seat during the ballot?
The result of the ballot is Mr Scott, 74 votes, Mr John Jarnas, 70 votes. Mr Scott, the member for Maranara, is elected Deputy Speaker. Congratulations. The Prime Minister has the call. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. I uh, rise to congratulate the member for Maranoa on his election. Uh, obviously, we don't see eye to eye on a range of political issues, but I've always found him one of the gentlemen in this parliament. Yeah. I have had the opportunity to speak to him about a range of issues. Uh, he's always shown a great deal of courtesy uh, when he's raised issues that are dear to his heart, including uh, some representations he made to me about distance education. I remember in particular, uh, and government did amend its policy because of the representations by him and a number of others in this parliament. So I am sure that he will serve in this role with great distinction. Uh, he is someone for whom there have been some twists and turns in the journey as well, uh, but uh, we uh, uh, welcome uh, his election and on behalf of the government and the Federal Labor Party, I can certainly say that we will look forward to working with him. Uh, the same uh, caveat applies, as I said to Madam Speaker. I can't uh, always promise you perfection in behaviour, but we will do our very best to work with you in a spirit of goodwill and decency. The Leader of the Opposition. <coughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, I uh, congratulate the member for Maranoa. Uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, obviously a tremendous honour for uh, an opposition member of parliament to win a ballot uh, in this chamber. Uh, and the fact that the member for Maranoa has won the ballot for deputy speakership uh, testifies to his qualities uh, as a man, uh, as a member of this parliament and as a deputy speaker. Uh, so, uh, Yet again, we are in unusual circumstances, Madam Speaker, with uh, a member of the opposition elected as deputy speaker. Uh, I presume the standing orders will now operate uh, in the ordinary way. Uh, we will have to have another ballot, but I congratulate the member for Maranoa on his election to this high office. Yeah. The Leader of the Nationals. Well, thank you very much, um, Madam Speaker, and I'm delighted to congratulate my friend and colleague and neighbour. Uh, partners in the parliament in the class of 1990 uh, on his election Order. as deputy speaker. Uh, Bruce, Bruce has spent a lot of time in the chair 
He's, he's therefore well experienced and well able to undertake the task. He's a great champion of, of rural and regional Queensland and indeed regional Australia generally and uh, it's appropriate that his service is recognised by this in, this in this special way as well. He moves up one place, you move up one place uh, and we therefore have now a, a very experienced um, speaker and deputy speaker and I'm sure they'll provide great leadership to this House. Congratulations, yeah, Bruce, yeah. and best wishes in your new position. <coughs> the Leader of the House. Thank you, uh, Madam uh, Speaker. Uh, I rise to join the congratulations for the member for Maranoa. It has always been a pleasure in visiting the member for Maranoa's yeah, yeah. electorate, and uh, it is an electorate that uh, would fit a few hundred, if not thousand, of my electorate uh, in that vast part of uh, western and southwestern Queensland. And, uh, the member for Maranoa is someone who has the respect of everyone in this House. Yeah, yeah. As the Minister for <coughs> Infrastructure and Transport, uh, I regularly receive representations from the member for Maranoa. They are always genuinely put. Uh, they are put in a way which is not political, which is about uh, uh, him representing uh, his constituents in a very honourable way. I had uh, the great pleasure of being at the Birdsville races in particular with uh, the member for Maranoa and uh, can attest to the high esteem in which he is held uh, by uh, his, uh, his constituents. And uh, certainly uh, I, he isn't a bad tipster, although uh, I, I think uh, everyone in our, our party did okay that day. But of course, the Birdsville races aren't really just about the racing, and uh, it is a, a great, uh, iconic Australian uh, event. And indeed, the Birdsville Community Centre that I got to open that day, and other centres uh, visited uh, in his electorate on a number of occasions. So I congratulate him uh, on the election, and uh, certainly in terms of, uh, of uh, Mr. Scott, I would uh, I welcome. Uh, continuing to work with him. He has been a very good Deputy Speaker and I'm sure he'll continue to be one. The Manager of Opposition Business. Uh, very briefly, uh, Madam Speaker, it's, uh, I have nominated the member for Maranoa on numerous occasions to be the Deputy Speaker. It's nice to have a win. Congratulations to the member for Maranoa on his election. He will fulfil the role uh, perfectly as the Deputy Speaker of this parliament. and I look forward to working with him in the chair. The member for Melbourne. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Just very briefly, I'd like to also congratulate the member for Maranoa on his elevation. I hear a lot of heckles coming from that part of the chamber, but I must say, when the member's been in the chair, I've never known anything but impartiality, and I presume that will continue. So I congratulate him. The member for Hume. Madam Speaker, uh, I don't want to put a mozza on the, the member for Maranoa, but I have to say to you, Madam uh, Speaker, that uh, Bruce Scott was one of the, uh, the best ministers in the portfolio that he had. In the, uh, in the Howard government. I've known him to be a very honourable and honest individual, and uh, believe it or not, he's, uh, I, I very much admire Bruce Scott. Uh, the fact that he's a member of the National Party, or now he's a member of the LNP, uh, doesn't really uh, matter to me. Uh, he's, he's just a special individual, as is his wife, and I wish him well, and I know he'll do a 100 per cent job as the Deputy Speaker in the House of Representatives for all members. The member for Mariner. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. And first of all, may I congratulate you on being the second uh, female elected to the Speaker's role in this place. Uh, you certainly deserve that. I've worked with you over a number of years now, and you have always brought dignity uh, and a, a spirit of cooperation uh, in the role. Meeting every morning, as we have in the past. Uh, we, we can run through the, the blue to see what's coming up in case there may be some blues occur in the House and we've been able to discuss those very much in the role as speakers and deputy speakers as, as it should be. Um, can I also thank my nominators, the uh, member for Sturt and the member for New England, uh, for their confidence in me and also the uh, way that the House has showed confidence in my ability to take out this role as the Deputy Speaker. I guess just listening to the, um, the comments after the announcement, uh, I'm one of those lucky people here tonight just per chance that 
My wife is in the, uh, in the gallery up there. And I, I'm not quite sure that um, she recognised the person you were speaking about. <laughs> but it is for me, and I know it wasn't for you, uh, Madam, Deb Madam Speaker, that uh, your family couldn't be with you, but it's per chance my wife was here to experience this tonight, and it's just uh, one of those things that was uh, quite a, uh, by accident in a way that she's been able to join us here tonight. Can I just say that um, I've been able to work with you as the deputy, deputy to you, Speaker, but I think we all learned a great deal from Harry Jenkins. Uh, he was in many ways a mentor to many people in this place, including those on the Speaker's panel. Uh, and I think uh, we were able to bring I think the quiet confidence and I think the um, quiet respect that, that um, Harry always kind of instilled in us as his two deputies in the start of this parliament, we can certainly bring that uh, in this role that we both have now. But I just thank the former, member, former speaker and the member for Fisher for his very kind words about myself today. Unfortunately, I was not in the chamber at the time. I was actually up at the um, Telstra uh, function here tonight, lobbying Telstra to get more mobile phones in Western Queensland in a quiet and dignified way. <laughs> uh, and uh, they did listen to me. Uh, but I do thank the member for Fisher for his comments that were very kindly spoken of me tonight. So I want to assure the House that my role as the Deputy Speaker uh, will, as I've always been, wanting to be impartial and make sure that you are all heard in silence. Now, that's not always possible. There are the standing orders that govern the role that we take in this place, uh, Madam Speaker, as you know, and it's the one that I believe that gives this chamber the great power that it has. And I respect the uh, standing orders and uh, the standing orders, of course, that were meant a little in this parliament, I think has only made it a better place. So with that, I certainly look forward to working with all of you in this chamber. Thank you for your confidence you've shown in me tonight, and I can assure you I won't be letting you down. And the member, the leader of government business in the House, all I can say is that I've now taken the former speaker, Jenkins, to Birdsville. I've taken the leader of the opposition to Birdsville races, but we still have your shirt that has, uh, that, that has hamburger juice all down the front to auction one day, and one day I hope it's worth enough money to seal a few kilometres of road out in Western Queensland, and I thank the House tonight. Can I, can I also congratulate the member for Maranara? Um, we've worked many years together, and he's an honourable deputy speaker, and I know he'll do the position proud, and I congratulate him. The Leader of the House. Well, I say to the deputy speaker, what goes on tour should stay on tour. <laughs> and understanding order 32, I am at the House to now adjourn. The question is the House do now adjourn. All of those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the heart eyes have it. Noes have it. Division required? No. The, the Speaker's on her feet. The House stands adjourned until 9am tomorrow morning. <laughs>